President Trump was watching yesterday, and he has rendered his verdict. He says that former FBI Director James Comey's testimony on the Hill is a major victory for the administration's side of the Russia story, in effect, a complete vindication. Yesterday uh, showed no collusion, no obstruction. That was an excuse by the Democrats who lost an election that some people think they shouldn't have lost because it's almost impossible for the Democrats to lose the Electoral College, as you know. You have to run up the whole East Coast and you have to win everything as a Republican, and that's just what we did. So it was a, uh, just an excuse. Frankly, uh, James Comey confirmed a lot of what I said. Now, you might be able to find some overstatement in there, but here's what's true. As of 8 p.m. Eastern Time tonight, Donald Trump is still the President of the United States, and that means that on the most basic level, Comey's testimony failed to achieve its goal. Make no mistake, removing Trump from office was the goal. There was collusion. Russia hacked our election, assaulted our democracy, imperils our way of life. You hear those lines all the time. We hear them every night in this show. But nobody in D.C. actually believes any of that. That's why nobody ever explains how exactly it happened or what specifically the effects of it were, because they have no idea. And in fact, they don't really care. They just want Trump gone along with anyone else who is in the way. Russia is just a means. First, they tried racism. Remember that? Trump was supposed to be the biggest racist since Bull Connor. Hillary Clinton based an entire presidential campaign on that idea. It didn't work. In the end, Trump got a higher percentage of votes from some minority groups than Mitt Romney had four years before. Oops, not a good strategy. And then somebody creative came up with the idea of Trump as traitor, a Russian agent posing as a 70-year-old New York real estate developer. It sounded kind of far-fetched, but for some reason it kind of worked. Half the country seemed to buy it, and 100% of CNN viewers were all in. It's been all Putin ever since then. Mike Flynn lost his job over it. Others may follow. Now they're trying for Jeff Sessions, who's not only the attorney general, but probably the smartest and most principled person in the entire administration, and therefore the greatest threat to total progressive domination of everything. He's got to go. So, of course, he's a Russian spy now, too. Comey applied it yesterday in his testimony. Afterward, he went behind closed doors in the Senate with details. That conversation was supposed to be secret. That's the entire point of a closed-door meeting. But needless to say, somebody leaked it almost immediately. Apparently, Comey suggested that Jeff Sessions may have interacted with Russian Ambassador Sergei Kislyak in the spring of 2016. Notice the qualifiers there. May have. Suggested. Comey doesn't really know. Neither does anybody else. And even if it's true, who cares? What exactly does it mean? Doesn't matter. House Minority Leader Nancy Pelosi, never one to wait for facts, is already demanding that Sessions resign over it. I did say on March 2nd that he should resign, as a, Sessions should resign as Attorney General. Yeah, he should resign. But wait a second. What's the crime here exactly? Is there evidence that Jeff Sessions worked with Russia to elect President Trump? Nope. Never has been any evidence of that. Here's what Sessions is accused of doing. Last September, he met with Ambassador Kislyak in his Senate office. He was one of the 25 times he met in 2016 with an ambassador in the course of Sessions' official Senate duties. Then last July, during the Republican convention in Ohio, Sessions spoke at an event called Global Partners in Democracy. Dozens of ambassadors attended that event, which, by the way, was organized in part by the Obama administration, probably Russian plants there, too. After his speech, Sessions apparently spoke briefly to Ambassador Kislyak, who is not a spy, and whose job it is to speak to senators. Sessions never hid either of those meetings. He simply said the meetings took place in his capacity as a senator and had nothing to do with the Trump campaign. There is zero proof he is lying about that. Yet he came under a lot of pressure and recused himself from any Justice Department investigation of Russia. You'd think that would end the matter, but of course it didn't. Again, this is not about truth or fairness, much less protecting this country from foreign threats. It's about toppling, let's not lie about it, a democratically elected government that the permanent class in Washington doesn't like. Now, for the record, collusion with a foreign government against the interests of the United States is tantamount to treason. It's definitely a moral crime, and we would never defend it. We'd attack it, of course. There's just no evidence it actually happened. This whole story is a hoax. It's a lie that those who tell it are beginning to believe. That is the definition of mass hysteria. It's deeply hurting our country. And yet otherwise smart people press forward as if it's all entirely real, despite mounting evidence it's not real at all. Yesterday, for example, Jim Comey told the Senate that a major New York Times story from February that pushed a Russia collusion narrative was actually garbage. That report by the New York Times was not true. Is that a fair statement? In the main, it was not true. The people talking about it 
often don't really know what's going on, and those of us who actually know what's going on are not talking about it. And we don't call the press to say, hey, you got that thing wrong about this sensitive topic. We just have to leave it there. So the story in question, you won't be surprised to learn, was based on anonymous sources. And after Comey made his remarks, the Times admitted it couldn't even find those sources for a response. Whatever. The Russians hacked our democracy. Let's find another witch to burn.